I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account to you, most excellent Theophilus. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. I want to thank Father Vaughan for his kind welcome and invitation to share with you, the good people and your visitors, another festival tide. Another time when we come to rekindle friendships. Another time when we come to recall relationships past, witness given, lives lived before God and others. And as we do so, it is a pleasure to be with you, the church army, as you lift your praises to God and you bear witness to his goodness. As we consider our witness here, we are also called to share our witness abroad. Church is not just in these walls, in this precinct. Church is every day and church is everywhere. And we are called to live and to show forth in our lives what we believe. Luke or his gospel at least, is my second favorite gospel. It has a lot going for it, and it is one which we as Christians and as people can learn a lot from. Luke has at the heart of his gospel the care for the poor, for the needy, the sick, the marginalized in society. And we know this by reading that book. But he sets out not so much to bring the marginalized to Christ. He sets out not so much to tell of Jesus healing the sick. He sets out not so much to tell even of what Christ did in his life. But in this short passage we heard from the gospel, he wants the story of God to be told. He wants the story of God to be known by Theophilus in an orderly fashion. And he wants this story to continue to be told. We are challenged, we are called rather, and challenged to tell our story also. You here at St. Luke, like those of us at St. Bartholomew, and a few other churches across the diocese, next year we'll celebrate 190 years. And I share a secret with you. The same reason this church was established all those years ago is the same reason that we are here today. The same thing those first priests did 190 years ago. We are called to do the same today. The same lives that were touched are the lives that are also being touched today. And as we are called to rise towards 2020, I am not here to challenge you to do anything new. I am not here to challenge you to change what you do. 
But what I am here to do is to encourage you to tell others what you're doing. To tell others who enabled you to do it. During his welcome, and at times I thought it was a sermon, <laughs> we were reminded of the work that the church army has done in the past. And we were encouraged to continue to do so, to continue to have our cottage meetings, to continue to go out and rally others, continue to go out and tell the story of look at what the Lord has done for you. The same thing that was done over the past 190 years is the same thing we are to take beyond 2020. But we have to constantly remind ourselves of what this thing was. It was not the priest. And I see you have in marble those saintly men who would have done their best to interpret and expound the gospel of Christ to people in this area. But it was not them, nor was it the PCC. Many of us think that we have arrived when we put counselor behind our name. Many of us think that we are the owners of the church. But it was not the PCC. As much as we may not want to hear it, it was not even the church army or any other organizations within the church, within the body of Christ. This church was set here. Those people witness here. Those people spent time here so that others abroad may know that there is a place called St. Luke. And at St. Luke, the gospel of Christ is lifted up. And so my friends, it was God it was his love, it was his grace, it was his mercy that kept us all these years. And it is only by those that we will continue. It is only through those that we will go towards 2020 and beyond. My question for us, what is your story. Often we meet persons and we want to know so who are you? Where are you from? What kind of name is that? I never heard that before. All your friends see you with a stranger and they want to know who the body be. It is the story, it is the human interaction that makes this church and others alive. It is the human story whereby we are able to reach our brothers and sisters. Years ago there was the ideology, each one reach one. Years ago, there was the ideology, tell a friend, be a friend, bring a friend to Jesus. Years ago, there was brothers and sisters hand in hand, telling their story, and others came. We read about this in the Acts of the Apostles, where the church grew because they loved one another. We learn how Barnabas sold a piece of land and gave the proceeds so that the church may grow. That is what we are all about. Yes, we go about this different ways. 
but it is the human interaction it is the human story it is meeting that stranger in a public or sometimes private place and acts tell us a little about yourself how many of us would have been to professional training sessions and have what is called icebreakers and the leaders would instruct you meet someone you've never met before take two minutes and find out about that person so that you can share with the group I must admit that those two minutes seem very long when you're with a stranger and you're forced almost to interact but think about the friendships I know that I have certainly met many good people and still to this day recall and interact with them because of that two minutes that is what the gospel is all about Luke writing to his friend Theophilus and says I want to tell you so that you may know what actually happened and the secret is that we must listen when the story is being told and listen not to respond or not to give an answer but listen so that we may know listen so that our lives are made better by that interaction everyone has a story to tell the stories we tell are the reflections of who we are where we have been who we are today and what we hope to be tomorrow that is why we ought to listen to the stories of those around that is what mission and ministry is all about that I'm sure will be a component of this mission 2020 telling our story and hearing the stories of others that my friends is what the church is called to do yes we partake in the sacraments yes we have our meetings yes we even receive the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist but at the core of its message the church is about stories being told stories made claims on our minds and our hearts often before we know why or how stories hold us together and sadly stories also keep us apart we tell stories in order to live and these are the essence of who we are this is what makes us different from other creatures yes they may tell their stories in touch in smell and in other interactions but we have those as well as the ability and the capacity to speak to reason and to hear that is why our story is important that is why we have the scripture read at our worship services so that we may hear from God that we may in our being know what God is saying to us as a people of God we are a storytelling people we know from the beginning because it's written in the Bible in the beginning God and so this love story between God and humanity began God created all of this wonderful universe God created man humankind and gave us charge over the environment to be stewards of and not lords over that is the story that we tell and the story goes on how God interacted with man even though humanity strayed 
God continued to pursue man even in the depths of our sin when we had gone astray God so loved the world that he gave his son and so we have a rich heritage in scripture in society in this place and Deuteronomy reminds us of this as we see God given the Ten Commandments as again father alluded to we must know this so that we can understand how we ought to act before God and before each other and with with each other our story in that same Deuteronomy does not end however with the law it continues with the injunction to tell it to your sons and daughters and to your children's children this storytelling is to continue I remember years ago sitting listening to my grandparents interact and tell old-time stories we have lost that we speak and prayed about our youth but when last have we begged their indulgence and said please turn off the device for five minutes and let me tell you now the attention span is not as long nor do we have the commanding presence as our grandparents so don't keep the children too long but tell them some of your stories and not only the hard difficult stories tell them about the good times tell them about what happened in this church how you came and interacted with one another how you heard about Jesus how you were able to order and fashion your life because of what you heard in this place and as you tell the stories to your children make sure that they are able to gain an appreciation of those stories which is why I say do not only tell the harsh and difficult times let them come to learn to love your God as you did I say at St. Bartholomew and people don't always understand but I say a child can come in that church and walk around and do anything and I never notice because I want that child to be comfortable in the church I want the child to be familiar with God's house but please for God's sakes adults stop talking stop walking about stop distracting from the worship because I have very little tolerance for that and we must learn the difference when we come to God's house it is about him I went to a church yesterday because I'm on a little holiday and I was ashamed the usher by the door talked from the start to the finish of that service a total distraction what I wonder from my story needless I say tell the children your story so that when they go away when they travel when they make their own lives they will remember yes that place was good to me yes I was welcomed in that place yes I heard about God in that place but tell the story honestly and fairly storytelling is the basis of our written scripture which began in the oral tradition and eventually made their way to parchment then paper now pixels on our smartphones and devices but regardless of how the stories are transmitted the gospels all give the reasons for the writers telling their stories Luke from our reading 
told his story so that Theophilus may have an orderly account so that he may know how Christianity came to being he may know this history of what it is they're doing how many of us know our history in this place we are about to celebrate 190 years do we understand the traditions of this house of worship do we understand why the structure is a little different do we know the significance of what we have far too often we go elsewhere and see things and we want that why we can't do that wouldn't that be nice if but they do not fit particularly well into our situation our circumstances is a little different and so again i welcome father's remarks about the church army form of worship and following the structure and including all the necessities for salvation even though it may not look like even song or sound like even song even though it may not function as a eucharist it serves to bring us closer to god know what you do and be proud of your traditions stand up for them do not allow them to be watered down and to be changed unless is necessary because sometimes we hold on to the wrong things and throw out what is needed and so we must know our story know our history and be able to relate it to others explain it to them so that they will gain a greater appreciation of what it is we do yes we come to worship our God but we are to tell others about this God because it is not about us we begin with the Bible God's story the story of God interaction with humanity but it is not static it does not did not end with the writing of scripture it continues in our lives today yes we read scripture we study it and in it we learn about people of faith throughout the centuries we may even discover that there are people like us because the stories of scripture includes an assortment of characters rich and poor young and old male and female hopeful and yes even cynical and sinful and God worked through all of them like the people in scripture we too have our stories of faith they are the moments where we have come to know who God is in a profound way there are times when we wrestle with angels and yes demons there are times when we struggle to understand when we have rested in God's presence and in the comfort of his embrace as we wept there are times when we dance for joy in his presence these are all the stories of our faith God's story is a powerful story my friends it is an incredible and important one that is why we gather together to tell our story that is why we worship each time we gather it is an opportunity to tell the story of God's interaction with humanity and to celebrate how his story interacts with each one of us through worship we can then interpret our stories in light of the story of Jesus and God's overwhelming love for us we can better make sense of our own stories and the stories of the world 
and we can rest and trust in the author of our stories giving praise to a God who is the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end of all stories and all times and seasons when our stories and God's stories inter when our story and God's story intersect discipleship is the result living a life of faith means living into God's story and making them our own it begins when we study them when we read and talk about them to the point that they become woven into our being we must know this God before we can speak of him we must know this God before we can share him we must be able to say that God intersected with my life and he made a difference it is not a matter of quoting scriptures or even singing songs it is a matter of God living in you for many of the, us this yes begins with scripture with hymns such as Psalm 23rd that comes readily to the surface when we are in need of comfort or reassurance but the more we engage in our understanding of God's story the more readily these stories come to us and we're able to share them with others in both challenging and celebratory times and even more important the litany the worship the prayers of the church are what we have to rely on in moments of despair and doubt when we are unable to state what it is in our lives we can say I believe in God when we are in despair or doubt we can say our father who art in heaven when we know what no do not know where to turn or what to say we can say Lord have mercy because we have been taught not by route but through experiences that God is there with us this is our story and we ought to tell and share it with those around a note of caution our story in this place and others is not always as smooth and as easy as some would have it to believe but we're not called to do away with or deny the difficult moments elsewhere in the world today Christopher Columbus was remembered but he was remembered by some who seek to obliterate him from their history he was remembered by some who celebrate his arrival he was remembered by some who seek to obfuscate his existence whether we agree like or dislike the fact that there was a man named Christopher Columbus is part of our story he came to this part of the world and is responsible for our being here and the irony of Christopher Columbus name is is that it really means the Christ bearer the Christ column is what Christopher Columbus means and so that is his story whether we accept it or not so too with our story in this church since we began our journey our anticipatory journey at St. Bartholomew I have many I have had many phone calls many persons came to me and say that one there he ain't no good and they have records where one of the former priests collected so much money as a slave owner I cannot say he was right or wrong 
but it is who we are. When I was in college, Codrington a few years ago, the tea tempest in the teacup at the time was Bishop Broom apologized for the church involvement in slavery. And the question was, how can a black man apologize for what was done by others? The truth of the matter was, he can apologize because he was in the chair at that time. And the history, good or bad, is what he inherited. Our story also is what we have inherited. So do not try to run away from it, but learn from it. And as we celebrate this coming year, our year ought to include the process of telling our story, the stories of our lives, and the lives and the ministries of this congregation. Our story ought to include reflections in worship, along with opportunities for conversations to help us think about where we have been and who we are in order to imagine where God is calling us to go. Perhaps, Father, we need to look at during this year moments of reconciliation and times of conversation between our adults and children so that the story is told correctly and understood in terms of what was going on. The story did not happen in isolation. But we need to know and share the story. So our altar service here will enjoy the church army service and understand and appreciate it. The same way the church army will be able to appreciate and involve themselves in the Eucharistic life of the church. What are the common traits? What is it we hope to achieve? We tell our story so that others will understand and appreciate. We will not always convince everyone to the correctness of our position, but at least we should be able to have that dialogue. We are called to be God where we are. A rising church is about, to con is about continuing to write our story. And when it is done well, we will remember that it is not just our story. It is not of our design. It was all through God's grace and mercy. So my friends, God's story is begging to be told, not by the preacher on a Sunday morning, but God's story is begging to be told by each and every one of us, day in and day out, as we seek to be a part of God's existence. Each day, we ought to practice, get a little practice sharing that story, telling that story to those we encounter, those we meet, those who see us each day. Let them know a little about us, but not only who we are and where we are from. Let them know about God's existence in our lives. Let them see the change in us and let them know that that change is not about us, but it is about God. Share that story of your favorite Bible verse. Why you love it and what it means so much, why it means so much to you. Tell them about that time when you felt particularly close to God. When God spoke to you and revealed himself to you through nature, through others, through a song. Tell them the story of your past how God was able to change your life and made a difference to you. Wherever you go, allow your story to resonate with those you encounter. Share that story. 
as you do so, share God's love and God's mercy. So let's share our story with the Theophiluses we meet in the world, just as Luke sought to share his story, the story of salvation in an orderly account. Just as Jer Isaiah, in the year King Uzziah died, when the Lord's favor came on him, was able to share his story when he saw the Lord high and lifted up. Just as Timothy was told to continue what he was taught by his mother and grandmother, we too add our voices to the stream of time in this place. Time we believe and know is an ever-flowing river. Our existence is but a drop in it. But that drop makes a difference to some tree along the way. Let your story make a difference in the lives of those we encounter. As we reflect on our story, and I take my seat, I invite those of you with your tambourines to help me share my story. Amen. And my story is this. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me, I heard about his glory.